The biggest misconception we have today about dinosaurs is when did they live? From an evolutionist viewpoint, dinosaurs evolved into existence about 220 million years ago and died out about 65 million years ago, long before man ever came on the scene. That's the biggest misconception. That whole idea is based on an assumption. Let me rephrase that question. Will anyone living today see a dinosaur? Probably not, because as far as we know, they're extinct, but we have searched everywhere in the world. But has anybody in history ever seen a living dinosaur? The answer to that one has to be yes, if you believe the Bible, because the Bible teaches that God created the dinosaurs on day six, the same days he created Adam and Eve. We also have many legends and traditions throughout history of creatures called dragons. Now, we didn't use the word dinosaur back then, because that's a fairly new word. It wasn't invented until the 1800s. So maybe they called them dragons. So did people see dinosaurs living? In history, yes, we know. Even the Bible characterizes a, a dinosaur-like creature. Now, why do they think it's a meteor came down and struck? Well, throughout the Earth, we find this layer of clay, and we find a chemical in there called iridium. And they think that's the result of a meteor impact that destroyed all the dinosaurs. Well, there's major problems with that. One, the dinosaurs all didn't die out in that one layer. They're all up and down the, geolo the, the geologic column. Secondly, if all the dinosaurs died out from a meteor impact, we have light-sensitive creatures that survived that meteor impact when there's supposedly no sunlight. So we have a problem there. And third, we don't even, we're not even sure that it was a meteor impact. And now some of these secular scientists are saying, that meteor impact in the Mexican Peninsula was not the right time frame and not the right size. So there's confusion within the evolutionist camp. So what really did happen to the dinosaurs? Well, from a biblical perspective, when we look at the real history, a lot of people in the churches think maybe they died out in the flood. Well, many of them did die out in the flood. However, the Bible clearly teaches that two of every land-breathing creature went on that ark. As a Christian, we can actually use dinosaurs as a witnessing tool. It's a wonderful witnessing tool to lead in to getting to the gospel. Jesus Christ makes that statement, John 3, 12. You can't trust the heavenly things or earthly things or historical things. Why trust the rest of it? In other words, if you can't believe Genesis for what it says, why would you believe that Jesus Christ lived, died, and was resurrected. Why would you believe that? Did anybody ever see that happen? No, we never saw it. It's an historical event. Yes, 500 witnesses to his resurrection, but that's history. Nobody living today ever saw that. Nobody ever saw Jesus Christ create an incident that Jesus Christ was the creator in six days. So why would we reject part of the Bible and not the other part? Then there's a major part of the gospel. See, the foundation of the gospel, we, the gospel really has three parts. We forget this. There's the power of the gospel, which is Jesus Christ, death and resurrection. There's the hope of the gospel. And then there's the foundation of the gospel, which starts in Genesis. And that is key. A lot of people can give the gospel, but they really can't defend the gospel because the defense of the gospel starts in Genesis chapter 1. First of all, answers in Genesis, we don't think there's a dinosaur dilemma because the problem has been solved, it's right there in the Bible. It's the evolutionists that have the problem trying to figure out when they lived, when they died, and what they were like. That is the problem. But what answers in Genesis is doing is we're combating what the world sees. So you go to all these museums all over the world, what do you see in there? You see a secular, humanistic approach to the history of the world. Man evolved over long periods of time. Dinosaurs evolved over long periods of time. What we're doing in Answers in Genesis is we're taking dinosaurs back. See, God is the creator of all things. He created the dinosaurs. The secular world has tried to take them away and give them a different definition. We're taking that back, and that's one reason we're building this $27 million museum. It'll be the one place that we know of that you can come and see the real history of the universe. You go through this museum, You'll see the history, what's happened. You go through the seven seas of history based on the biblical teaching of the world, not a secular humanistic approach. One of the messages I like to get to people is, 
the greatest, one of the biggest attacks we have on our children today is using dinosaurs. The world is trying to teach that dinosaurs died before human beings. There was death before sin. And our children are buying into this. But we can use dinosaurs as an evangelistic tool. A lot of people out there are saying, dinosaurs, when did dinosaurs die? But you know, that's not the real question. That's a good question, but it's the lesser question. We can use dinosaurs to evangelize to the lost. The proper question to ask about dinosaurs is, where did they come from? Why is that so important? When I travel around the world and go to museums, I see pictures of dinosaurs, I see bones of dinosaurs. When I look in textbooks, I see pictures of dinosaurs. Something is missing from the museums all over the world and something is missing from all these textbooks. And what it is, is where did they come from? You never see the transitions that led from some amphibious creature all the way up to the dinosaurs. It's as if the dinosaurs suddenly appeared in the fossil record, fully grown and able to do what they do. So the question is, where did they come from? No secular scientist has been able to answer that question. And when they can't answer that question, here's what you want to do. And I call this real evangelism using God's creation. Why should we accept evolution when it cannot produce the evidence? We already have a faith. Tell me about your faith and I'll tell you about my faith. You see, if they can't answer the question where the dinosaurs came from, they're asking us to accept and they're asking our children to accept evolution by faith. Why should you change your faith for a faith that doesn't have any answers? Because when I turn to the Bible, it has answers. It tells me that dinosaurs were created on day six. It talks about a creature in Job chapter 40 called Behemoth, which you know, the description is much like a dinosaur, but there's even more than that. This creator, Jesus Christ, was also our savior who went to the cross and was raised from the dead. See, there's your tie. The one who went to the cross to save us is also the one who called everything into existence. If we deny the creation, we've denied the works of Jesus Christ. Where is our faith now? The Bible is a whole story, and that whole story begins